Joining me again, our guest, Danish lawmaker Nasser Khader, Islamic scholar Tariq Ramadan, and the former Dutch MP Ayan Hershey Ali. Now, you were busy nodding your head frantically, saying that you got all heated up. I mean, Tariq Ramadan is saying that Islam is part of Europe now. It is a European religion. Get used to it. Some people will want to wear their religious symbols, just like nuns wear habits. What's wrong with that? Islam is not a European religion. There are Muslims in Europe, and they bring Islam to Europe. Islam is a set of beliefs. It's a set of values. And what we are seeing in Europe is that there is conflict between the values of Europe and the values of Islam. And those Muslims who adapt, choose to adapt to the values of Europe, will become Europeans. And they will be able to believe and to practice the religious dimension of their religion. I guess my, what my Islam, question is... But they will not be able. I think they're going to run into problems if they try to bring political Islam into Europe. And that's what we're seeing. We are having a discussion... About political Islam. About the political dimension of Islam. Islam has a political dimension. It has a mm -hmm. social dimension. For instance, women's position. It also has a religious dimension. We are not having a discussion about praying five times a day, fasting Ramadan, etc. But we are having a discussion about basic human values that Europeans have resolved and Muslims have not. Okay, Tariq Ramadan, Europeans have resolved basic human and democratic values and Muslims have not. And would you buy the, the idea that in fact a lot of these women in France are doing it as a political gesture and as a, as a sort of identity, a national identity? It has nothing to do with this. Look, uh, what we have now, and this has to be also, you know, we have a conservative uh, MP from Denmark, and we have someone who is speaking about Islam saying, in order to be European, you have to be less Muslim because Islam has in itself a political dimension. So I think that we are not listening to what the Muslims, the European Muslims and the American Muslims are saying. I think that uh, Ishi Ali should listen to what uh, the President Barack Obama was saying when he was talking to the Muslims and to the Muslim, the Muslim majority countries, he was also saying to the Americans, look, Islam is an American religion. And now we have to rely on facts and figures. We have millions of European Muslims who are abiding by the law, speaking the language of the country, and they are now uh, uh, loyal to their country. And they are doing this as an act of faith. It's not for Ayan Ishiali, even though he, she was a we Muslim. Having... It doesn't mean that because you were a Muslim, you are open-minded. Mr. You Ramadan... Were Muslim, Mr. Ramadan, and some others. The Mr. point Ramadan, is we are that having, you have no, today Mr. Ramadan, who are abiding by the law. And we I am are a having, we are having I am Muslims. A I'm sorry, we are having Muslims who are stuffing explosives into their underwear and who are taking flights to kill innocent people. But that's got nothing to do with the that. veil, Hershey. It, it doesn't have anything to who do is, uh, with the veil. Who is speaking about killing but innocent it has people? To do, it has to do with reading the Quran, people? participating in jihad, which is a major concept in Islam, and who say, it is my religion, it's my God who tells me to kill innocent people. It's my God who makes me impose. We are saying my, exactly so that the women opposite, can, I'm sorry. I'm you sorry. are not saying exactly the opposite. You are, are an Islamist sorry. in the closet. We are sorry. You are saying, you want to tranquilize everyone into believing that Islam at, is look, a religion this, of peace. I'm, I'm and so come out and say, as the numbers increase, I do not like your argument. I'm very suspicious of your argument when you say it's only a small minority of people. When but you know in places but, but like Iran, in Egypt, in Algeria, that it all started out with a small group, with a number of minority, and that increased. Okay. And in democracies, numbers matter. Can Demography I matters. To that? Ayan, uh, Ayan, she's she's made Can a I? very strong okay. point. Tariq, listen, she's made a very strong point, and she's basically echoing what uh, André Gérin said in a way that this veil is the visible part of an iceberg, and behind that is a black tide of fundamentalism. So. Obviously, people like Ayan and the people Look. like the French government believe that this is the beginning of some kind of, of tidal wave. It's an what? empirics. It's not just a belief. But, but hold on a second. No, but hold on a second. It is the beginning. Let Iran, me, in 1970s, there were only about 10 let people who were let wearing me the veil. Go ahead. Will you let me respond, Ayan? Go ahead. Let me... Go ahead, Tariq. I'm, I'm sorry. It's impossible to speak. It's impossible to speak to someone who has a dramatic mind. And the problem is Islam per se. 
So let me, let me finish, please. What we have today is a new visibility of Muslims, and that's true. Let us really look at facts and figures. We have a tiny minority of women who are wearing the niqab and the burqa, and we have some uh, uh, extremist views that we have to condemn by saying it's wrong to kill innocent people, it's wrong to impose anything in the name of Islam. And what is said by the great, great, great majority of the Muslims around the world and in Europe as well as in the States is that it has to be a free choice. We cannot impose even the headscarf. The women should be autonomous and free and no violence and killing innocent people as it was done in that the States or true. anywhere else in Muslim majority countries. This is not acceptable. So the point is now, let me come to what Gérin is saying. Yeah, Gérin is saying the saying visible not, presence yeah. of the Muslims. That there is a problem. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish. There is, yes, a problem with uh, the new visibility because the people are perceiving this new visibility as a new colonization. In fact, it's exactly the opposite. It's that Mr. the Muslims Ramana, are now Europeans. Hold on, look at the ban. Immigrants, Arshan, Muslim immigrants to I am, Europe I am, I am choose to come to hold Europe. On. I initially was I came to Europe, I am, you came to Europe. I am, you are not on forced on to come. <laughs> It's Tariq, hold on one second. I Tariq, can you hold on me, one second? Me, second. Hold on, something. sir. Let hold on. No, something. hold on a I second. Initially. You will get your chance I in one minute. Hold on. Okay. I want to read some statistics because there's obviously a lot of a lot of uh, sort of stereotyping going on. Look, 90% of Muslims in in Belgium feel very strong sense of local belonging. 78% of Muslims in England feel a sense of belonging to Britain. 49% of Muslims in France feel a sense of belonging and 23 who feel German. Let me go to Nasser Khada for the last word. Why is such a lot of hysteria when the facts speak to mostly integrated Muslims? Why do politicians and Feeling. elements of the media focus so hard on, on the few people who maybe want to wear uh, the niqab or the veil or whatever it is? Nasser. You know, the discussion about niqab and burqa is just a little part of the discussion of political Islam. As I started uh, saying that the majority of the Muslims in Western Europe and in Denmark are well integrated and loyal, and loyal citizens. Uh, a recent survey in Denmark uh, told us that uh, the majority of the Muslims uh, in Denmark are an integral uh, part of the labor force. Many of them are becoming a part of the Danish middle class. But we have, but we have a minority that live in, in ghettos, in parallel societies. Physically, they are living in Denmark, in the West, but mentally they are living in the Middle East. Right. And that's the problem. Uh, the small uh, groups are uh, making the problem for the majority. All right. Now, we have to finish this conversation on TV, but we have a webcast, and we're going to continue this online. So if you would stand by, we will have that after this broadcast. But for now, for more on Muslims in Europe, go to amanpour.com, where we have an interview with a French Muslim woman who says that a ban on the burqa would isolate her from French society. That's another view. Next, our postscript. A fascinating look at the intersection of Islam and Christianity in one family in Britain. We'll be right back. <laughs>